What's up, everyone? Welcome back to the Stochastic Best Ball YouTube channel. I'm here today with my buddy Nick Lepre, and we are talking a very interesting topic, small field strategy in best ball tournaments. Uh, actually, I don't want to say tournaments because we're talking about the smaller leagues, maybe the 12 team leagues, 16 leagues, three team leagues that they offer in on underdog fantasy, our sponsor today, but all over the industry on many different platforms, not only are we seeing these massive tournaments with huge prizes up top, we're also seeing a lot of smaller leagues with no need to roster manage your team, no waiver wires, anything like that. And some of them are not your traditional 12 team leagues changing the positional value and so we thought it would be quite a valuable thing to break it down. With me today to do just that is Nick Lepre at Notorious FNTSY. Nick, how are you today? I'm doing great today, and I think that this is a great topic to discuss. I have played a lot over the past couple of years in the small field, not tournaments, I guess, but the small field games, because I think they're just as fun as doing the big tournament, and you can just do them at a pretty quick rate as well, just like the normal drafts, and I find it to be very interesting how people kind of don't understand that you should be drafting differently, and a lot of the time, those teams that draft just like it's the big tournament, just like it's the Best Ball Mania 3, are not going to be very successful. Absolutely. One of the ways I like to think about this is the tournaments are there for your upside, for fun. But ultimately, yeah. from an EV standpoint, an expected value standpoint, each ticket into a Best Ball Mania tournament and into a Puppy tournament is slightly minus EV. What we believe is with the use of the Osmo projections and the Osmo consensus rankings now available at the Best Ball section over on stochastic.com, still powered by Alex Baker and the data and, t data and tools team you know from Osmo.com, but they are those stochastic rankings now. We believe that in these small fields and even in these 12-team leagues that you have a much, much better than average chance of winning money, especially when you only have to finish fourth or better in order to make your money back in many of these 12-team leagues. So let's start there, actually, Nick. Let's start with these 12-team leagues where you're not trying to make it out of that league to play in the larger DFS-style tournaments. These are almost like the cash game equivalents in the best ball space. These 12-team leagues, how do you go about thinking about changing your strategy from say something like the best ball mania tournament to a standard 12 team league when you're just trying to finish top three to make money. Yeah. So I'm basically drafting these like it is a redraft league, meaning I'm not necessarily looking to go crazy on a team stack. If I draft Dak Prescott and I don't get CD lamb, it is what it is, right? Of course I'm looking to maybe make one small stack, draft a quarterback, get that correlation with maybe their tight end, the receiver, but it's not very important to me. Whereas when I'm doing a, best ball mania draft i am looking heavily towards the stack when i take a quarterback i'm thinking in the back of my head there's a bunch of wide receivers that i like with that quarterback or vice versa when you take the wide receiver you're looking at the quarterback you can stack them with that is what i'm thinking about the whole time i am very focused on figuring out the week 17 correlation that i can make the week 16 correlation i can make whereas in these small field games i don't think you have to be big braining it i don't think you have to be thinking all that much you can almost kind of turn your brain off and just start drafting like it's a regular league and just to finish in the top four outside of 12 in inside of the 12 team tournament or game i keep saying fucking tournament that's not what it is <laughs> you get what i mean when you're competing against 12 people you don't have to necessarily go crazy in these drafts with the stacking i think the biggest difference is that a lot of people will go crazy with the stacks like it's a regular best ball mania three and i do personally do not believe that you have to do that at all and you could easily come number one in your draft and your quote-unquote league i guess is the way you could think about it in your league you don't even have to stack in order to win in my opinion you agree with that i totally agree with that in fact you didn't know this in my notes for today my biggest recommendation for any of these 12 teams 16 three team leagues is aim for one small stack. That means one to three, uh, excuse me, two to three players, quarterback tight end combo, quarterback wide receiver combo, running back wide receiver combo from a high powered offense that we know and love, and then chill. And then chill. 
I do think stacking helps boost the upside of your team just a little bit, increasing the odds of first place instead of second or third, but we are yeah. not going overboard. We're not aiming for game stacks, team stacks, division stacks, something that we've talked about extensively in our strategy videos on the Best Ball channel in the weeks previous here. In these types of 12-team leagues, we're really aiming for just a little bit of positive correlation. Just sprinkle it on top so that we can get that boost if need be. Let's also talk about positional allocation because the bottom line is, especially in half PPR leagues like underdog fantasy, the running back from a game by game standpoint is still absolutely king. Yeah. I'm honestly just taking more running backs. If you could just simplify the way that I'm thinking about these leagues compared to the larger field tournaments, I'm just taking more running backs because a player like James White or JD McKissick and their eight points or nine points and their low probability of being a league winning player is extremely valuable for a team where I'm really just trying to average a little bit more than the rest of my field, the rest of the field of the league each and every week. Yeah. I don't love those players in tournament situations. They're not undraftable by any stretch. In fact, I'm seeing a lot of sharp players lean in to, the, to those types of players in their hyper-fragile drafts from a structural standpoint. But from a positional allocation standpoint, six running backs is a very, very common thing for me in these small field drafts where it's almost unheard of in tournaments. The wide receiver position, while still valuable, is uh, takes a little bit of a backseat. Is that a way you're thinking or are you letting it happen draft by draft when it comes to positional allocation even in these small fields yeah now i think in a small field draft you can actually draft like i said more like it's a regular fantasy draft so in here i'm not looking to reach as much i'm looking just to draft based upon the value in my opinion of each player so my kind of allocation of each player is going to change or each position based upon each draft but I do think that, like you said, you should be drafting a little bit more running backs than you normally would. Most drafts, I'm finishing with four or five running backs in Best Ball Mania in these big tournament drafts. Here, I'd be drafting six, maybe even seven if I'm feeling a little bit spicy. And I actually think that you can draft your handcuff in these formats. In a big tournament, there's no way I'm drafting. If I'm drafting Dalvin Cook, the odds I draft Alexander Madison is very low. But in a small field league, you can think of it as, I'm fine drafting Alexander Madison. Do you agree with that? A hundred percent. In fact, I love handcuffs in, in tournament settings, but it's just going to be varied from the first rounder or second round running back. For instance, if I take Christian McCaffrey at the end of, uh, at the end of the best ball mania tournament, I'm probably not taking a player like Chuba Hubbard. I might yes. take Saquon Barkley's backup or Jonathan Taylor's backup, whoever that is. Philip Lindsay, I guess right now might be the pick for that. But in these types of tournaments, no problem with a Cook and a Madison or a McCaffrey and a Hubbard. The more certainty you have about who that backup will be, that is not a wasted pick. That is an insurance policy that you can afford when you're only trying to get third or better and not trying to yeah. be at the very top of a hundreds of thousand or tens of thousand team field like we are in the large field tournaments. Let's pivot for a second now and talk about these six player drafts and these three player drafts. And now the biggest phrase that you need to remember as we shift our focus here we're still talking about small fields we're still talking about just the need now to be maybe five different players or two different players positional value changes drastically and i'm actually going to start with three player drafts because i think it's a little bit simpler to talk about the change in positional value and just talk about the tight end position and how things so drastically change in three field tournaments. Would you agree with that? The tight end position suddenly becomes one of the most valuable spots there is in these three field games, these three player games. Yeah, this is something that I've talked about heavily in the past, even with regular redraft fantasy football. Say when you're in an eight team league, some people play in eight or six team redraft leagues, the tight end position becomes immensely more important in that league compared to a 12 team league because there's going to be multiple weeks in a redraft league where you're playing against someone who has that top five tight end. So it's much different compared to a 12 team league like normal. So in these three team drafts, these six team drafts, I am going to be way more likely to potentially quote unquote reach up earlier in the draft and take a Travis Kelsey or Mark Andrews, who are my top two tight ends, because I believe that the tight end position is so important there. You need to make sure that you have one of those top end guys, because say you draft tight end number five, and he ends up not playing too hot, you are going to be in a very bad scenario all year long. I agree, and I think bully tight end 
as in trying to get three of these big five this year is absolutely a viable strategy. One thing I will say is that the strategy from year to year does change. In fact, we had an article yeah. on stochastic.com about taking down three man underdog tournaments. We're going to bring that back up to the top so that you guys can see that evergreen strategy. Although the players change just a little bit year to year, the number of elite tight ends is a very important part of this process. I still think yeah. Kelsey is the top tight end, but now we have players like Mark Andrews and we still have players like Kittle and Waller and Kyle Pitts available to us with massive upside. I genuinely think trying to get three of those five is a viable strategy here. But the fact that two players in a three-team draft can now have two of those five does mean that the strategy is slightly, and I do mean slightly, less important as it was, say, last year when it felt like there was only a big three at the position. What say you about that? Yeah, I completely agree with that. I think there really is kind of a more big five kind of thought process here. I still am heavily drafting the top two ahead of the other three, right? Kyle Pitts, Darren Waller, and George Kittle. I like Mark Andrews and Travis Kelsey significantly more because mm -hmm. I feel like at the end of the year, those are going to be the number one and number two guys. I really think it would take an injury or something crazy to happen for Kittle, Waller, or one of them to kind of outscore and put themselves inside of the top two. I really think those are the clear number two. And to kind of add into what you were saying, I think this thought process of the quote-unquote bully tight end can also be applied to the quarterback position in these drafts. Yeah, yeah. And while it's less important because the available points at the end of drafts at the quarterback position, and I mean three-team or six-team in this case, it's so minuscule in its difference from the quarterback value at the beginning of drafts, it's less important than the tight end, but it is still completely viable. We're, we're still talking about a five or six point per game differential between the first and the last part of the draft. Yeah. At tight end, it can sometimes be seven or eight points. It can do even more than that. So it's a little bit more. Uh, and let's not stop talking about positional allocation there because it can be very jarring when you first get into these three-teamers there are running backs for days, Nick. There are running yeah. backs for days. So I'm actually, when I'm first thinking about tight end, and I feel like I've gotten that part of my draft dealt with, the next position I'm trying to fill out is superstar wide receiver because at a certain point, they start to dry up real fast. Like, uh, yeah, yeah, sure, if you get Cooper Cup in the fifth round as he was going last year, that's a different thing. But <laughs> you gotta you got to try to get as many of these elite wideouts in this format as you possibly can. Yeah, I completely agree. It's so different. Like when you play in this normal, you're used to playing 12 team best ball drafts, 12 team fantasy leagues, and then you hop in there. And normally in your 12 team league, like by the third round, you're like, oh shit, who do I take at the running back position? Like I see these upside players, like, oh, maybe Zeke's going to bounce back. Then you're like, ah, oh, maybe let me just take a receiver here. And then when you're playing these three team drafts, you could be in like the seventh round and there's still running backs that are very, very good available to you so i am definitely looking to go a little bit heavier on wide receiver than normal i'm probably still one of those people that is like an old man even though i'm 23 years old that likes drafting running backs a lot really early in drafts that's like the old even man in the draft three strategy. teams no even no in the not three in the teams no not in the three teams the three teams i'm a little bit different but in like a 12 team league i love those running backs but in the three team leagues you really do need to hammer in on these wide receivers because your wide receiver core could look insane and they could still be getting these high upside running backs later on in the draft that could fill in for you and be dangerous for your team. Well said. Well said. And we've been talking about it all show long, guys. They have three team, six team, 12 team, and of course, all these big field tournament drafts available to you on Underdog Fantasy. You see the banner at the bottom of the screen there if you're watching on YouTube. While we are stochastic.com now, we are still using promo code AWESOMO over at Underdog, and that gets you up to $100 in a first match deposit bonus. That is four free entries to the Best Ball Mania tournament. And most importantly, guys, it's free money. It's free money. You put $100 in, you get $100 in free money back into your account. 
and you can use that to take down humongous prizes at underdog truly the best place to play this best ball mania 3 tournament while not the focus of this specific video is one of the coolest tournaments i've ever seen in the fantasy football space two million dollars to first place one million dollars to second place and one million dollars to the regular season champion there's going to be there's going to be someone sitting there in weeks 15 16 and 17 just sitting back with a million dollars already in their pocket competing for the $2 million prize at the very top. That is an insane place to be. If I'm there or one of our best ball mania draft teams are there, we will be watching weeks 15, 16, and 17 with giant cigars every single week on that <laughs> new playback app. Uh, guys, by the way, the, I digress here. Please use promo code AWESOMO at Underdog Fantasy. But if you haven't checked out what we're doing with the playback app with our live viewing experience, just get ready. For NFL season, we are about to have so much fun watching these games live with you guys, all of those stochastic fans, and sweating, of course, our DFS and best ball lineups all season long. All right. As we round the corner, the final stretch of this small field video, this is actually the hardest section for me to kind of suss out. And these are six team drafts. Six team, not 16, <laughs> six <laughs> team drafts. Because really what we're doing is enmeshing some of the strategies we know work well and good for 12 team leagues and trying to mix in some of the strategies that help us in three team drafts. But from a positional value standpoint, we see a dampening of tight end value. We see a dampening of quarterback value. I actually think in 16 drafts, you could make an argument that bully tight end is more important this year. But besides that, it's just kind of a mix between the two. Are there any specific six team strategies that you could come up with here? Yeah, for me, it's basically the exact same thing I'm doing in a three team league, but just not as aggressive on the tight end position. And I am a little bit more likely to say, take a running back earlier on in the draft when compared to a three team mm -hmm. league. They also offer on underdog fantasy again, promo code Osimo. 10-team drafts, and in those, I'm basically looking at it just like it's a 12-team league. My strategy does not change in that at all. Like you said, a six-team league is probably the more confusing one out of all of them, but I do think at the end of the day, your strategy shouldn't be as aggressive as it is in a three-team league, but also shouldn't be as kind of relaxed as I was talking with in the 12-team drafts. or kind of just chilling out, just drafting like it's a normal league. I think you got to be a little bit more aggressive. I think that's a good way to put it. I do have a favorite roster construction strategy this year in six team drafts in particular. I mm -hmm. want two elite quarterbacks and two elite tight ends and then want to use the volume approach with running back and wide receiver because there's only five other opponents in that league, which means the quality of my, say, running back three, running back four, or wide receiver three or wide receiver four does not falter compared to, say, a 10 or a 12-team league. It just falls. Yeah. The the expected points per game falls as we move down the draft significantly slower, slower to the point where I want to get those onesie positions and try to get two elite options there so I can just be done with it, taking the quantity over quality approach at the running back and wide receiver position. Not a hard and fast rule in a six-team league, but I'm much more likely to do that in these types of in those games than I am in three team or 12 team leagues. How about you? Yeah, I completely agree with you. And to anyone in the comment section, that's like, Nick, your hair looks fucking stupid. Why is there a strand hanging down? I'm getting a haircut after this video, so it won't look as bad anymore. Thank you. That's, that's an important point to make because I'm looking at you. Like I, I've almost had to put you onto the other monitors. So I had, <laughs> you know, I couldn't deal with so it. But I'm trying to talk about strategy here and he's doing, you know, the uh, hot boy summer f hair flip. I don't know what's going on here. This is not what I signed up for, Nick. I, I don't know what to say. But no, this this has been a really fun video <laughs> today. And I'm really glad that we got to dig into this strategy here because so much of the best ball content throughout the fantasy football industry is about taking down that $2 million yeah. prize on underdog because who doesn't want $2 million? That sounds really nice to me. But how about these bankroll building tournaments at all different varied price points? There are just so many options here, so many ways to win money, and we believe that with the stochastic projections and consensus rankings at your side, you have some of the best information available to you in the industry. This has been really fun, Nick. Any final words for the people before we get out of here? 
Yeah, like I was saying earlier on the video, I've been very successful doing these drafts across multiple websites. It is honestly not that difficult at all, especially since, again, like I said, everyone is really thinking about all of these crazy big brain strategies, and they don't like push them aside for these drafts. They're still going crazy for all this correlation, when in reality, in my opinion, again, you don't necessarily need that to win. And I believe that you guys will be very successful in these drafts as well. And they're also just as fun as doing the normal best ball mania drafts. They are so fun. And that's right. It's, it's much closer to pick the best players. Don't worry too much about strategy in these small fields. But I like that phrase that we came up right at the beginning. One small stack to add to that positive correlation for you. This has been a whole lot of fun, Nick. We will be back all summer long with more strategy videos, how to take down both the tournaments, small field, everything in between on Underdog and other platforms. He's Nick. Follow him at NotoriousFNTSY. I'm Matt. Follow me on Twitter at Draftaholic. We will see you guys soon. Have a good one. Adios, as they say in Spanish.